Stephen Mansfield, New York Times bestselling author and speaker. Doug Tenapel, I'm the creator of Earthworm Jim. Tweet groups. I'm Victor Dweck. Joseph Carter, I'm the Mink Man. This is Dave Baker from Forged and Fire. This is Liam Morgan. I'm a comedian, and this is why you should never, ne- never, never, don't ever, not ever. Don't waste your time. Oh, you really should. For listening to those darling, yummy Reverend and the Reprobate. Hey everybody! Thanks for joining I'm not the Reverend the, and the Reprobate. Thing. Hold on, I'm I'm never ready. I'm never done with what I'm doing. But we, are we not? You recording would have at to all? be doing something in but, order to not be done with what you're doing. No, it's, I'm doing something. It's what just, are you doing? May not, right now, I'm trying to do our show. I'm the Reverend Lucas Pinker. We'll be here with you all evening tonight. And with me is a guy whose mom. Uh, is just the nicest, sweetest lady on God's green earth, second to my mom. Look at that. Ragin' Majin. Ragin' Majin. Hey there. Is, so uh, so the, is she the, out of prison? The retrobate. I don't know. For, I'm not keeping the, up with your story? mom. That's weird. No, I mean, for... So Danley's here with me also. And tonight on the show, we've got uh, Nicholas Perdomo the third. Mm-hmm. He's just got such a regal Saint, name. Let's call him Saint Nick. Fine. <laughs> hey guys, welcome. No, um, <laughs> Nicholas Perdomo the third is on with us tonight. We talk about the way that some of the new FDA rules are going to be impacting or potentially impacting the tobacco community, specifically with cigars and flavored cigars. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we discuss a little bit about his background as a drummer, growing up playing David Crowder songs, which we thought was was pretty yeah. interesting. His favorite drummers of all time. Uh, we get into a little bit in controlled rowdiness. We ask some questions. From the fabulous, wonderful, the talented, the man, the myth, the legend we, himself, Dave Yancey. And lastly, we get new jobs. We do. So. I mean, they may be fairy tale jobs. All that and more on this edition of The Reverend and the Like, Subscribe, and Ding the Bell Retrobate. All right, Danley, on our airwaves today, we have one of the guests that I've been looking forward to for the last several months. We've had some hit and misses trying to get him on. Not only is this man uh, one of the family members of my favorite cigar family, the Perdomo family, but mm-hmm. also he's a very prolific drummer. It's uh, Nicholas Perdomo the Third. How are you doing, man? How are you guys? Good to see you, Lucas. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on the show. So um, I'm guessing you've been a Perdomo for most, if not all, of your life. <laughs> And uh, we've <laughs> we've got just a, a ton of questions for you, um, not just about the cigars, but about how things in the cigar industry might be changing. And I know that there's the the big question on everybody's mind, and what, I just want to... What, what are the rules in the Perdomo house? Are you allowed to smoke cigars indoors? Ooh, that's a good one. That, that's the one that we all want to know. Um, my wife's not a big, big fan of the idea my behind that. Either. Uh I'm, I'm working on a couple of things because it gets hot down here in Miami. So I'm working on a couple of things, how to, how to, uh, how I can smoke in the house and not get it to, the smell. I've been putting new filters. I'm trying, I'm, I'm working it. I'm trying. Sweet. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm in your same shoes that I, she's allowed me to smoke yeah. in the house. I think two times now. Yeah. And it was always a I special occasion. I should be occasion. able to smoke in the house. The, the smoke is what pays for the house. So <laughs> that's exactly right. Good point. Yeah. You wouldn't tell her that she can't office at the house during COVID. I can be getting smoking. <laughs> you can't bake in the house. It's yeah. going to make it smell like cookies. Oh, man. So I just want to want to touch on this because I know it's a sensitive subject. There's so much in the cigar industry that looks like it has the potential of changing um, there's a lot of speculation after the president's address about how the rules in the FDA might change things that are going on in the cigar industry, specifically as it refers to flavored cigars um, and some of the new taxes. Are there adjustments that you guys are are having to make right now that are are you know looking in the future are going to change the way that Perdomo does some things, or right now you guys just hanging tight and saying you know we're we're going to hang on and do what we've always done. Sure. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, we've been we've been working on this really since 2016 when we started Grandfot, when we started getting, uh, you know, putting our brands that were prior to February of 2007, and we started submitting that into the FDA to the government. And uh, basically, we've been approved because we my dad started the company in 1992, so we've been preparing for this for over almost now over five years, um, and we're preparing, you know, really to be regulated, but. Uh, I hate to see what's going on. We don't make any flavored cigars, but I, you know, I don't want to see anybody uh, get get regulated or 
you know, any banning. Because, I mean, if you start with those guys, then the government starts pushing the door little by little. So I hate to see what's going on. But in, in terms of Perdomo, we've been we've been preparing for this for a long time. And uh, we have multiple brands that have been grandfathered by the government, by the FDA. And uh, so we're really looking at, we're looking in really good shape. Now, one of the things that's so unique for our listeners who don't know about Perdomo in particular is that they handle up front a lot of the tobacco taxes so they don't get passed on to the customer. It's one of the reasons why their cigars can be um, so highly rated and at such an affordable price point uh, across the brand line. Um, so with the increase in taxes, I can see not only how that would be something that's passed along to the consumer in a lot of ways, but also that could uh, could potentially affect what you guys are doing in the way that you've you've always done it in the taking care of the customer first um, idea and philosophy that y'all have always had. So we've we've discussed about what kind of questions we wanted to ask, mm-hmm. what um, cigars we want to talk about and this, that, and the other. The, the thing I'm most curious about is, from what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Perdomo was one of the first families to move to Nicaragua, and all of the other cigar plantations that are in Nicaragua, all the other tobacco plantations, are incredibly envious of the plot that you guys were able to get because not only are your cigars able to have a lot of strength, but they also are incredibly flavorful, really, really smooth. What was the impetus behind you guys being one of the first to move to Nicaragua, and how did y'all kind of pave the way for some of the other companies to get there? So, uh, I mean, my grandfather, you know, in 1996, my grandfather had some old friends that were in the industry in Cuba, and they really talked about how great the tobacco in Nicaragua was. And, and uh, in 1996, at that time, there was only a company called Noxa, which is owned by JR, and uh, Hoya, de, Hoya de Nicaragua. Those were the only two running factories, in, I believe, in 1996, from what my, what my dad told me. And uh, we were the third to come back, because this was right after... The Sandinese, right after the re- revolution with the Sandinistas, and things started opening up. So my grandfather said, "Hey, we're moving to Nicaragua. We were getting destroyed here in the United States. My dad was paying. I think cigar makers, cigar rollers, were making more money than my dad was because oh, wow. the wages here were just so expensive. And we were a really high-priced cigar, not just not because we were trying to play any type of game, but just because the cigars are really expensive to make here in the U.S. And um, so you know, we moved there in '96, but we really didn't start growing tobacco until about 2001 um and so it was always my dad's dream to start growing tobacco and uh so the farms i believe you're referring to uh we have multiple but the one in esteli it's called finca natalie it's after my sister and it's one of the most beautiful great one of the most beautiful farms you guys got to come down our factory tours next year and, and really see it and then also we have another beautiful farm in jalapa named finca janine which is after my mother so uh, we have some really, really beautiful farms. We're very blessed, but we've been there for a long time. Yeah, I, I saw some of the pictures on, on your website. Oh, and, it's unbelievable. And, and at this point, I think we can probably wrap because <laughs> we were just wanting to get an invite to yeah, come. Yeah, that's it. That's all we were wanting the, was an invite to come to the tour. So, so we, we got we're it. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, no all, yeah. all joking aside. So what what was it about the obviously the the Nicaraguan tobacco and the way that you guys moved? What is it about the Nicaraguan tobacco or that area in particular that mm-hmm. produces such great cigars? It's really the grounds. Uh, they're all volcanic. I mean, you dig down twenty feet, it looks like topsoil. It's just some of the it's the best soil that I've ever seen in my life, and it just produces such rich, lush tobaccos that have so much flavor. Um, and really, Esteli, that's the powerhouse tobacco. That's that's just really, it's got a lot of body to it. It's, it's perfect for, you know, it's just perfect for anybody who really likes a medium to full body cigar. Those are the tobaccos that they're just, they're powerful, but there's such a balance to them, especially when you cure them and age them properly or ferment them and age them properly. Um, they're just, they're just really great cigars. I mean, great, really great tobacco just because of the grounds, in my opinion. That's that's awesome. You know, the, the, the funny thing is whenever I go to CI, Cigars International, or another cigar shop, the first thing I'm always drawn to is Perdomo because because of the, the display, the, the packaging that you guys have. Like, it just it stands out and it pops out. So that's another thing. In addition to having a, a great cigar, my mm-hmm. eye is immediately drawn to the shiny gold and, you know, the 20th anniversary 
uh, all of those different uh, colors and, yep. and, and uh, display, the way it's displayed. My last name is Pinkard, so anything that's got the big giant P on it that's yeah. on all those cigars, we are imme- like oh, those are the fine. ones, yeah, those are the ones whenever my brothers had kids, um, those are the ones that we got because it had the, the last name initial on it, and they're not... Cigar smokers. So they were like, I thought you started off by saying whenever my brother and I were kids, we got. I was like, what? No, no, no. no. Whenever my brothers had kids, that's why it's going illegal. (laughs) It's your fault. (laughs) It's not illegal. So, but that's what you know. Instead of they, it's a boys or it's a girl. We found the Perdomo cigars, and the anniversaries have the big P stamp on them. And so we, Mm. we went and got those. My brothers were like, what is this? (laughs) Did you get this custom made? I was like, no. This is just the guys. Um, that do this so well. So you guys are celebrating uh, the 10th anniversary of a couple of cigars. You just did the Maduro. You've got the uh, the Habano line that's coming into their 10th anniversary. Um, what's that been like, and, and what are you guys doing to, to promote those, which have been two great uh, labels for you all for the last several years? Our biggest brand is our Perdomo Champagne, the 10th anniversary Champagne. And Habano is right behind. That's our number two. That's That's a real big brand. That's a brand that came out in 2014 and uh just a really it's just a really just a real special brand that was it's something where that cigar just utilizes six-year age tobaccos that all you know outside of the connecticut shade wrappers everything's nicaraguan puros the sun grown the maduro the maduros and that was a cigar that we really initially started marketing as our barrel aged wrappers mm-hmm. so that's how we came out with Perdomo habano, habano bourbon barrel aging even though we've been bourbon barrel aging since our days when we started Champagne, but almost 21 years ago when we came out with Perdomo Reserve Champagne. Um, but that cigar, you know, the Connecticut wrappers are barrel aged for eight months. The Sun Grown wrappers are barrel aged for 10 months. And the, and the Maduro wrappers are barrel aged for 14 months. And uh, it's, just, it's just it's just a really fine blend. And then also, what was the other the other part the, of the, uh, the Maduro, question? Yeah. The Maduro 10th anniversary, I think it just recently was released, the one with the blue band. That's the one with the blue band. Also, we released the red band, which is the Sun Grown, two huge sellers. Those, our biggest release that we've ever had in the history of our company was our Perdomo Reserve Champagne with the Connecticut wrapper. And th- this brand, of, well, actually both the Sun Grown and Maduro, that's the biggest release that we've had since our Perdomo Reserve Champagne, which is our biggest selling cigar. People love the cigar. I'm you know, everybody loves the Sun Grown, but the Maduro, there's something about that blue and everybody really loves it. Yeah, the, the Maduro has been great, but the, the champagne is what started me on Perdomo. That, that's that's what I've had, a, a, you know, quite a few of. I don't think I've had the barrel aged yet. That's the next one I want to try. Yeah, so the, the Habano Sun Grown is my favorite out of that line, but the champagne is a staple in my humidor. And whenever I have friends that are wanting to try cigars for the first time, they're like, you know, I don't want anything that's too strong. What can I get that's that's smooth where I can recognize some flavor notes because you hear people talk about cigars the same way that they talk about wines. Oh, well, this one's, you know, got some cherry notes to it and it's chocolatey. And then you get, mm-hmm. if you, if you don't have a you palate gotta, that's attuned let, to that you stuff, you gotta let it breathe. Yeah. As soon as you, you start smoking a cigar, you're like, I don't understand any of this, but it's a, it's a process like anything else. But too many people start off with a really strong cigar yeah. because that's what their buddies get them, and they go and they puke. But what was and the then one they that come we back did? and they never want? It was the uh, what he was talking about, the Nicaragua de Hoya. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, we we, so, we used to be big sissies, and we would try to smoke this cigar, and we would throw up. Yep, every every day for months. Yeah. Um, Don't worry, I threw up many times in my life off cigars. <laughs> I was grabbing them as I was smoking them as a little kid, taking them from my dad when he wasn't looking, and uh, I I I threw up many times were, in my life. Don't were, worry about it. Were they all Perdomos? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good you. man. Sweet. <laughs> so the the champagne is the one that I typically start people out on if somebody's new to cigar smoking um, because it's just a, a phenomenal stick. But if you were to introduce somebody. Um, two cigars that's never done it before, where would you start them in their Perdomo line? I would start them in Perdomo Champagne. You know, to be honest with you, Lucas, we don't make a really, we don't make a mild cigar. Perdomo Champagne, just to give you an idea, but, you know, our eyes are sometimes, you know, they don't tell us the truth. You know, when you look at a light wrapper overall, yeah. you think it's a light cigar, a medium wrapper. It's it's a, you know, medium body and a dark cigar is a full bodied cigar. Um, but the truth of the matter is it's really, what's inside that filler and Nicaraguan tobaccos are, are really bold and they're very rich tobaccos. So the thing with, with what we do is, you know, for example, Perdomo Reserve Champagne, it's a very smooth cigar. That's because those tobaccos are six years age. That's because those wrappers are barrel aged in bourbon barrels for a minimum of eight months. So they're very smooth. 
but it's actually a very strong cigar. As a matter of fact, it has, in the nicotine level, it has about 3.9%. So if you took a, a light, a light uh, uh, Connecticut wrapper and put it over Dominican fillers, on average, those the nicotine level is between 1.7 and 1.9. So you're talking almost over double, um, Did, to be honest with you. Wow. So they're strong, but the whole thing is, is how do you blend it? How do you make it where it's balanced? And you got to really use well-aged materials, well-aged tobaccos. For for reference, do, are you aware um, what level of nicotine are in cigarettes? A uh, heck of a lot more than cigars. That, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Uh, okay. The nic- okay. The, yeah, because they add nicotine. We don't. I mean, naturally, tobacco has, has nicotine, like how coffee has caffeine. So it's it's naturally within tobacco, but through curing, through fermentation, and those those nicotines begin to the tobacco begins to round out. So, what in your opinion is your favorite or the best Perdomo cigar right now for 2021? I love them all, but I would have to say um, I smoke I smoke everything. But I lately I've really been enjoying the new Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Maduro. Uh, have one here, one here in my pocket. Good man for when I, my next cigar later on. And uh, uh, I, I love our 20th Anniversary Sun Grown. I also love our Habano Sun Grown. So uh, those three are, are really in my rotation. And Perdomo Champagne as well. I love I love the smoke of champagne. All right. Well, I have, I have one in my humidor too. The home. the champagnes. Yeah. Yeah. The champagnes are great. There, yeah. I will always go and buy the five packs whenever I see them mm-hmm. because I know that we're gonna have people over that want a cigar that is is nice, it's smooth, it's well rounded. So I'm always like, here, dude, smoke this one. And yeah, you know, have have you ever gotten a bad reaction from? No. You're like, not, ooh, I don't, I don't know. It's a little. Yeah, the champagnes in the lot twenty threes seem to be winners with yeah. every new person that that comes around that I've had to to smoke cigars because they are they're so smooth and and so great. Well, I want to shift gears just a little bit, and I want to talk about some of your musical career because no. uh, we've we've seen you on Facebook a few times playing the drums and i'm i'm curious as to what got you started into music and and how uh, are you using that to sell cigars so so my dad my dad is uh, my dad's the reason uh, why i'm a drummer i watched my dad play i remember i used to he would always talk when i was a little kid oh i used to be a drummer i used to be a drummer so one day in our factory in flagler street in south miami uh he he got his old drum set and he set it up and i i just started watching him play and i was just enamored him going around the toms and everything and so I just, I would watch him and I'd watch him and I would just, I, I copied him. And so I, I, I was probably, I've been playing drums now since I was five or six years old. And then uh, when I was, when I was growing up, I played in, our, in my youth group band uh, at, at school. I played for chapel services. And so I uh, played a lot of Hill song, different bands, oh, David yeah. Crowder. Band. So, you, hold, hold you know, so I, wait, 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 you played with them or you played their songs? I, no, I played their songs. I didn't. I okay, wasn't okay. good enough to play with them. Okay. I don't think we've we've got some friends that are actually on tour with Crowder right now that run his sound and do some of his tech stuff. Oh, great! Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's, right. so, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a really boring job. Yeah, they they hate it. They hate it so much. Um, so, what's your uh, what's your favorite Crowder song that you played? Um, what's the one? How he loves us. Ah, oh, there we go. That's uh, that's I, the one I you know. you, know, I, you played I, it a couple just, of weeks I ago. I just played that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, so that's how you got started playing drums, and then what, what's your favorite drummer, or who is your favorite drummer? Yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. And, and what's your favorite drummer would be Animal the Muppet. <laughs> uh, exactly. I'd have to say it's one A one B. I love Stuart Copeland from the Police. Oh yeah. And one uh, B, I'd have to say is Alex Van Halen. Ooh. I thought he. I love his swing style, and uh, I, I just I thought that those two are my favorites. That is, since my mom's not going to be watching this episode since it doesn't feature her, the uh, the Hot for Teacher double bass drum solo, uh, the intro to that song is the very first time I thought, you know what, we should get a good drummer. Other than that, I was just happy with somebody like Ringo that could keep the beat yeah. and not get off rhythm. Yeah. That was finally just, the point just where I was Just stay in like, the pocket and stay there, please. Yeah, don't do anything to mess up my bass line. <laughs> but after I heard the Hot for Teacher drum intro, I was like, you know what? It's uh, it's time that we get somebody that knows how to do a little bit more than just hit yeah, the man, hi-hats that is in a time. crazy. Why would your mom not like that? Just the content of the song? Or my the, mom was not a huge music Van video. Halen fan. Yep. yep. Okay. She saw the music video before she heard the song. Okay. And then I, she I heard the song and was not a fan. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've seen that yeah, too. My mm-hmm. mother, the Sunday school teacher, was not thinking that "Hot for Teacher" was what her son needed to be watching at age eight. As I was like, "Whoa, 
No. Nope. Exactly. That, that that immediately came off the list. <laughs> that and the Simpsons. Yeah, that and the Simpsons were, it's were just going to ruin her child. No goes in in my house. Um, what have so you've been in the cigar industry for for quite a while? I mean, it's it's how you grew up in doing this. What stealing cigars yeah, from his stealing dad cigars from, early age. from your pop? Um, <laughs> what have you seen as the most? I guess the sick the biggest significant change that you guys have made within the Perdomo family that's really put you head and shoulders above your competition? I think that overall, when you take the amount of years uh, since we were in Nicaragua, just my dad from the time we were buying tobacco to now when we grow tobacco, my dad, he, the amount, the inventories of tobacco, I think are our biggest secret that we have such great, big quantities of tobacco, well, well-aged really good materials and uh, my dad always thinks of the future i remember my dad buying connecticut wrappers one time he needed to buy a full container for that year and he ne- he negotiated with a guy and he ended up buying two containers and we only needed one but he said that tobacco that's like the bank for us that 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 tobacco is going to carry us through i'll work it longer i'll make it even better because i can ferment it even longer i can barrel age it even longer so the whole thing is, is my dad always says is, you're as good as your inventory uh, I think the way we sell cigars, uh, we're, you know, we're big into merchandising. I think overall, you know, we're a good partner with our retailers. So we try to do the best we can to be the best partner. And they've also been really great with us. So I think there's a, I think there's a multi, many multiple things. Uh, there are a lot of things, but I think overall, when you look at the industry, I think we're kind of in another cigar boom where there's a huge uh, people are smoking cigars left and right. But I think our secret is, and it's, I give credit to my dad, is our inventories of tobacco? I'm I'm curious. We've talked a lot around the the bands, the label, and Perdomo is got one of the most beautiful bands across yeah. Yeah. all of your lines. Thank you. Um, when I when I think of the cigar labels, I think of my father's, and I think of Perdomo as having the standout, just the most gorgeous cigars to look at because of that band. What all goes into the process of designing one of those? Because we've designed T-shirts whenever we were playing in a band, and that seems like a difficult enough task. <laughs> but the the intricacy of the artwork that goes into one of those, what's that process like? Well, really, it's it's. Uh, I have to give credit to our vice president Arthur Kemper. Uh, he's he's such a he's got such an artistic mind. He really knows how to when it comes to packaging, attention to detail, just the little things. He's just he's been studying it for so many years and he just does such a great job. We all collaborate together. Um, but he's just, he's just got such a, an amazing eye, uh, when it comes to packaging and when it comes to making different bands and preparing, you know, the packaging for, for future blends or cigars or repackaging. Um, but also I think it's in our printing. We use a company out of Holland, uh, all those foils, all those golds, everything that pops out, we use a company called Vrydeck. And I think that's, that's probably the, a real big secret for us in terms of um, when we started using those guys and just their quality of the, of the paper and, and just the printing um, it really just, it elevates the artwork so much. And uh, it's gorgeous. Th- those are, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I, I do have a question about um, somebody that works at your company, at least, at least according to the website. Oh, so I went to your website and I looked, I looked at, you know, about us, all of the people on there, I want to know about Jurgen Roeder because this guy looks like the happiest guy on earth. <laughs> At least on the website, he's he's over in international sales. Look at that. That's right. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a that is a guy that has that found his niche. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is is that true? Like is he just having I, the time of his life? He is. He loves cigars. I've known Jurgen Roeder probably since I was 4 or 5 years old. He's a gentleman. He's a he's just he's such a great human being. He's yeah, he's in head of, he's in charge of our sales over in Europe. He does a really great job. And uh, he's just he's always happy. As long as he's as long as he's got a cigar in his mouth, that's all that matters to him. So he's a happy man. What a gig. Seriously. <laughs> Going to Europe to, to sell cigars for Perdermo. When you're that, there retires. are much worse. <laughs> Gigs. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know that I would count that among. Uh, we, we, made the rough jobs. we made it to add. We made to add that to the 
to the um, to the video just so everyone can see the picture because this guy is just in heaven. He absolutely is. Uh, we we belong to a group called Holy Smokes. I don't know if you're familiar with them. It's a group of about four thousand uh, Christian cigar smokers and and pipe tobacco smokers across the world. Allegedly, we, yeah. One of the guys. It's a secret group. That um, one of the guys that's a member of that group is a guy named Dave Yancey. And Dave Allegedly. is an expert at pairing um, cigars and spirits. And so he had a couple of questions that he wanted us to ask you. The first one is, what is your favorite uh, Vitola? What's your favorite, for those who don't know, it's the ring gauge. What's your favorite size cigar to smoke? It's, again, it's 1A, 1B. For me, it, it just depends with time. But I my favorite ring gauge is a 54. Uh but my two favorite sizes are Epicure, which is a six inch cigar. So in this case, six by 54. And then the Churchill, seven by 54. Those are my two favorites. That's, I, I, like I love the, 54. I think that's the best. I like the Churchill too. I, I, always I just think so it's diplomatic. a great, yeah, it's just a great name. It is. And that's really probably mainly the reason why I like it is I get to feel like Winston for a little bit. I just want the hat. Yeah. Like I, I need the hat if I'm going to, if I'm going to smoke that cigar. And, um, and then you can run five feet and run out of air. <laughs> just like a, yeah, just like Winston. Yeah. Um, and then he wanted to know what do you, what's your favorite cigar and beverage pairing? Um, I'd have to say my favorite, my favorite cigar. Well, right now, I mean, it's always been for me 20th anniversary, uh, sun grown or the new 10th anniversary Maduro. Um, I love it with a cup of Cuban coffee. Ooh. I love a little Cuban espresso. Oh, that um, sounds great. And if you want to know with a spirit, um, I do enjoy scotch. Uh, I'd have to say my favorite scotch is Glenfiddich. Uh, okay. That's my favorite. So either the 15 or the 18, those are those for me. Yeah, those are nice. That's what I enjoy. The 18 is my favorite. Yeah, you'd you'd have to have a treat yourself weekend in order to, to get the 18. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, Or a birthday. Maybe a ten year anniversary. Yeah. Twenty five <laughs> year anniversary. We'll start storing money away now for yeah. that. Um so uh we man, we can't thank you enough for the time. At the end of all of our interviews, we do a segment called Controlled Rowdiness, mm -hmm. where we just ask some rapid fire questions. So we would just want you to answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Um Sure. Let, let us know. So uh, if you could only smoke one cigar for the rest of your life, what would it be? 20th anniversary, Sun Grown Epicure. Good. Yeah. That was quick. Um, what's the biggest humidor that you've ever heard of? Personal or, or like an actual store? Pro probably personal. Yeah, you, personal you, I, I know stores, they got big ones, but. Personal, I have a friend of mine. In uh, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, he has a walk, his own walk-in humidor in his at his uh, at his home. Um, he probably has twenty thousand cigars, oh ten thousand, fifteen thousand cigars. Yeah, that's Crap. insane. It, it puts my two hundred to shame. No, 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 seventy-five. I got seventy-five. 75 yeah. yeah. So, if you could work with any other cigar manufacturer to make a signature blend, who would it be? Um, AJ Fernandez. That's Lo that's kind of what I thought. I I, I love because uh, he makes. No, he doesn't make the. He makes the new new the world. The new world. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I I like that one. And a lot. the, the Bella well, he's artist. a buddy of mine too, so he's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Um. What's the manliest cigar in your opinion? Like like the what what's what's the, the guy? Perdomo the, cigar. The, a Perdomo. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Sticking with the brand. I like, like it. the the uh, the most interesting man in the world. What what what's, is he smoking? Yeah, what's he smoking? The per, or Perdomo. Perdomo. Yeah. What do uh, what do you think is the hardest drum part that you've ever attempted? Tom Sawyer. Oh. But, yeah, no joke. Yeah. A anything peart. Okay, so so were you able to to get it? Did you have enough pieces to your drum kit? Because Neil Pert had like seventy-five pieces on that drum kit. I got, I, I, I got. Look, there is one. There's only one Neil Pert. Uh, may, uh, may he rest in peace. But he, uh, I, I, I think I did pretty well. I think I did pretty well. I'm no, I'm not a Neil Pert by any stretch of imagination. But I think I, I was probably eighteen, nineteen. I practiced a lot. Wow. If if you're even getting close to yeah, nailing this stuff on yeah. Tom Sawyer, yeah. that's that's yeah, you're you're pretty good. Pretty impressive. I would say seventy percent, which I think seventy percent is really good. 
You know what? Yeah. If, if you're ever in Dallas, we might need to, uh, we might need to call you up so that you can come and fill in. What do you in. guys? What do you play? You play? You guys play? I'm, instruments? I'm a bass player, and he's a guitar player. So we started. A, um, we can you move to Miami? I've been looking for a bass yes. player because we're the most unselfish <laughs> members of a group. We keep the time. Yeah. Yes, yes, we can move to Miami. Yeah, we'll. we'll I, I'm we'll not tied to, to this Miami. place at all. <laughs> Kirsten, we're moving to Miami to go hang out with the Perdomos. Heather, we're moving. And it's going to be fun. To my, so oh, when yeah. I go to Dallas, you guys got a drum set for me? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we have, we have an electric drum set inside of a sound booth. Yep, it's a Yamaha <laughs> with the plastic rings. No, we we don't. We actually yeah, have, we have a, a full kit. We have a friend of ours who posted a video of his son playing a, an electric drum set, and he had it inside a drum cage. And we just giggled about it. Yeah, for... we're like, buddy, that's not uh, really don't need that. That's yeah. that's a lot a lot of stuff. So, um, in the impending zombie apocalypse, what weapons are you going to use to protect the Perdomo estate? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, AR-15. Oh, there you go. There you go. That makes sense. Uh, what what Perdomo are you going to be smoking while doing that? Because it's pretty awesome to shoot, yeah, shoot an AR-15. While you're smoking zombies with your AR-15, which are you going to stick with the 20th you can, anniversary? You can, you can take it out and you can uh, go I'll do. I'll do a 20th anniversary. I'll, I'll do a 20th, sure. Yeah. 10th anniversary, whichever. Well, you heard it here first. The AR-15 and the 20th anniversary Perdomo are the gear that you need for the zombie apocalypse. And then lastly, can we be the co-head of sales for uh, Holy Smokes Group? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Perfect. How, how, go. Can, how, can I, how can I get on to Holy Smokes Group? Are, are you a Christian? Absolutely. Sweet. Up, then you're proud in. Proud Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Then uh, we'll send you an we'll, invite. We'll and get you. All right. Well, hey, Nicholas, thanks very much for your time, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Take care. Let's do this again soon. Nicholas freaking Perdomo. Yeah. You know, we've been, a lot of people won't know this. We mentioned it in there. We've been trying to get him on for months. Yeah. Like since February, we've had some kind of scheduling conflict, whether our schedule or his schedule or something's happened. Yeah. We've had him booked the very first week. Well, there's some people that like we really want to talk to, but you just, you got to have patience and a lot of people book out. Were they just like I got my my next four quarters planned? Yeah, and I, I've got a little bit of time here and here, but it's vacation. You know, we had that with Seth Dillon where yep. he went in on vacation, and uh, we just worked around it. Yeah, and it worked out this time. And as we were talking back and forth, Nicholas was like, "Look, I'm not. I want to do this. I've been trying to get on y'all's show." And uh, can you believe that we I know we caught him on the way to the airport. His lovely wife is driving him to the airport. So everybody that's watching, his wife is driving him to the airport. He's not driving and, you know, FaceTiming yes, with us. And at it's also the same not, time. not a Tesla. Yeah. So. So he's Although got her name may be Tesla. I don't know. He's got, I don't I don't think her name's her name is now Perdomo. It's Mrs. Perdomo. <laughs> Mrs. Third. Tesla Perdomo. So anyway, he's he's being driven. Um, mm-hmm. So that he could do the interview. Let's fast forward. <laughs> yeah, he he did that so that he could get the interview done for us. Let's get to the he's airport. He's talking to he's talking to everything. It's just yeah. it's just awesome. Um, so my only question after that is: Are do we get the cards and then we just submit for reimbursement? Or are they going to send us our <laughs> that, that shows our that we are co heads of sales <laughs> for Perdomo? Holy smokes! I think that that would. I need to get added to this website. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be right next to Jurgen. You want to be? <laughs> <laughs> like everybody... Danley Gibbs. It'll be a co-picture. I Danley think... and and Lucas, co-heads of sales. <laughs> I think if we were next to Jurgen, then we would just look like we were not having as much fun in life. I want to be yeah. next to somebody that's a stoic, so that my goober smile would be up there and not next. That's to... That's a good point. Yeah, throw me in the middle. Don't put yeah. me next to Jurgen, and. Uh, you know, so we'll, then we'll all be good. So we've got some follow-up questions for him, mainly yeah. how do we get on the website? What information do you need from us? Yes. Salary. Exactly. As co-chairs of the Holy Smokes Perdomo Reception Committee, we would like to extend this laurel and a hearty handshake. Yep. Um, but it was just Great Mel really cool. Reference. He was really laid back. Oh, he was yeah. a lot of fun. It was awesome. In the interview, getting to talk to him about playing in chapel – that's mm-hmm. not what I was expecting at all. It turns out we got to talk to him a little bit off air. He's been a believer for a long time. Comes from a good, strong Baptist family that just believes that the stuff God planted in the ground is worthy to be smoked. Um, yeah. 
Man, uh, I got nothing. It was awesome. Th- yeah, this is just one of those those times where I'm looking back on it. I'm like, this is not a guy I ever thought we'd get to talk to. And yet, nope. here we are, getting getting to talk to him and uh, got a little tiny cigar education about some of the stuff that was going on. Yeah. I, I, I did not realize the Nicaraguan soil was volcanic, like to 20 feet deep. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask him, I was like, what else do you grow? Yeah. Because, like, if you grow jalapenos, are you going to get, like, the sickest jalapenos of all time? And Maybe. You probably will. I wonder if... So, you know... I mean, peppers would grow well. The shade-grown tobacco is grown in the shade. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many shishito peppers we could <laughs> grow, like, just underneath his tobacco plants. Because the tobacco plants are pretty tall, and shishito's, like, this big. Yeah. We could... I mean, I'm maybe in. that's our side hustle. When we It'll, go down there, we're just going to take a bunch of shishito of sh- plants. Sales for Holy Smokes slash <laughs> shishito grows. The new Perdomo shishito line. <laughs> 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 this, this, this pepper pairs, <laughs> pairs best with a nice Sprite yeah, and, and uh, some soy sauce. And some soy sauce. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for uh, for checking out the Reverend and the Reprobate for another week as we get to interview people that we really have, have no, no business. business talking to. And, but, uh, but we're continuing. Yeah, and maybe if he, he comes into Dallas and he does come a day earlier, we get to jam with him a little bit. We'll, uh, we'll give you guys a little bonus content. Yeah, no, can, I gotta start practicing Tom out. Sawyer. <laughs> that also is not easy on guitar. Well, I've gotta sing it and play it at the same time, so yeah. we're fine. Also not easy on bass. Nope, get easy. Hi, this is Nicholas Perdomo, Perdomo Cigars, and this is why you should never listen to the Reverend and the Reprobate.